Hello and welcome back to another episode of the Accessible Technology Podcast where you get a chance to learn about the everyday tech that is accessible for disabled people as well as what isn't and also get to hear tips on how everyday technology can become more accessible. My name is Fakes and I am a blogger, vlogger and podcaster who is paralysed from the neck down, meaning I can't breathe without the help of a ventilator or a tracheostomy tube and I also can't move anything other than my head, which is why everything that I hear in this podcast is coming from the point of view of someone who actually uses all technology or most technology by putting either a chopstick or a stylus in her mouth and using tech that way. But anyway, hope you enjoy the episode. This podcast is available to listen to on Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music, Audible and Spotify. So if you would like to follow or if you like what you are hearing, please follow and consider sharing as well if you think someone else would be interested in this as well. However, if you'd like to support the podcast and the content I produce in other ways, you can also support it by going over to the Thebes Journalism Buy Me A Coffee page, where you will also be able to Find exclusive episodes that aren't part of the podcast, as well as checking out a shop that I plan to open at some stage where you'll be able to buy other products. So please consider checking it out. In this episode, you're going to be hearing my thoughts on my mid-2015 15-inch MacBook Pro, which was uploaded to the YouTube channel on the 26th of July 2019, and is actually more commonly referred to as my Big Mac, as it is the one that I now use more so for just writing the book because the storage is more difficult to put up with if you are doing a book, editing a podcast, creating video files and everything else as I am. So, yep, that's why we call that the book Mac. However, like all of the other episodes that I have done so far, if you would like to see the video that I actually did upload on the video version of that episode, you can find it by going into the episode notes and clicking on the link over to it because it will be right down there. And yeah, that's all there is really to say about that. But before I get to far into this episode and get the review in as well. Here's a couple of notes about the 2015 15 inch MacBook Pro that I would like to give you just beforehand. One of the older Mac models as of 2023. It is actually one of Apple's last retina models. It was the first to feature a force touch trackpad and the last to include a full array of ports. It also comes with 16 gigabytes of memory with a choice of up to 256GB or 512GB of storage. 
which is I know laughable compared to the other more up to the models that you get in today's world. And you also get a seven twenty P HD camera which is already built in. The ports that you get include a mic safe, two power port, a two thunderbolt, two ports of up to twenty gigabytes per second, two USB three ports of up to five gigabytes per second, an HDMI port, a three point five millimeter headphone jack. For anyone who still uses wired headphones, and an SDXC card slot for anyone who uses them. However, that 2015 15-inch MacBook Pro can also operate Bluetooth keyboards and trackpads, and like all Mac laptops. The computer, I think, costed around 1200 or more when it came out. But with it now being an older brand, you can now get refurbished versions of it for as low as £282, with others going cheaper than that, making it perfect for anyone who just wants to type up paperwork or he just wants to own a Mac for the point of owning the Mac, whether that is for skill work or for actual work. But now, let's get straight in to the review. The 2015 15th MacBook Pro with Redmond Play is a larger of laptops designed by Apple and available in silver. Mr. Z, I think it's 15.4 inch LED back. This display 2880 by 1800 made of resolution at 250 pixels per inch with support for graphics, supported scale resolution, 300 nits of brightness, a standard color, and a 900. I run a contrast ratio. We also have two foot foot processor, which is point two gigahertz can, including a two point two gigahertz quad core and so forth processing processor with turbo burst up to three point four gigahertz with six megabytes of L or the 3.5 gigahertz fan with 2.5 gigahertz quad core and cell core i7 processor turbo with this turbo burst up to 3.7 gigahertz megabytes so what else is there for this when you first get the 15 inch macbook pro you see it comes in a white box with Apple special plastic over it. After tearing it off, you can see information at the back with the main picture of the product on top of the lid and the product title on the side. Inside, you get the 15-inch MacBook Pro with some information and Apple stickers, a charger and a charging block. This MacBook Pro is lighter than previous generations, with its height being 0.71 inches and 1.8 in centimeters, and its weight being 4.49 pounds and 2.04 kilograms. Given it's an older model, newer models will have got lighter over time. But it would help a lot if it did get a bit lighter because it would make it safer for people who can't lift it as easier as others. There are ports at the side which are used to charge 
Falcon US base and other pen drives as well as one for the wire of wired headphones to go into but it also supports wireless and also includes a force touch trackpad which can be accessed via hardware clip and can be bring up contact amp no matter where you click on it. Aimed at people working in film photography or any other creative market. It has Intel Iris Pro graphics 2.2 gigahertz uh, to 256 gigabytes or 2.5 gigahertz to 512 gigabytes dual display and video supporting full native resolution up to 3840 by 2160 pixels fundable digital video output HDMI video output and a 720p FaceTime HD camera Someone working within photography, video production, graphics, writing. The 2015 inch MacBook Pro is a good laptop with has able to show all my work in good definition. It takes a long time for the storage and memory to fill up. Which works for me as I often have to work with big documents. My only bit of criticism is it's hard for me to see a force touch on a trackpad. And since I got my laptop in mid 2015, I've also struggled with doing a right click. I think I want to go by changing the two finger right click to a right trackpad tab to annoy me. But in future versions, I would like for this to be available during the setup. But overall, I would give the 15 inch MacBook Pro 10 stars. So, after listening to this review of the 15 inch MacBook Pro, what did you think of it? Did you get it? Back when it first came out, and if you did, are you impressed by how long it has lasted, if it has lasted at all, or are you more disappointed? And if you didn't even buy it, does this make you seem interested in getting one compared to one of the other models? And if you want a Mac to help with school work, or other work, or with anything else, do the costs of this Mac make it sound more interesting to you? And why is that? If you would like to pass on some of your thoughts to me, you can include them in a review or wherever you are listening to this on as well as via the contact page over on my Thebes Loud Tech Reviews site, altechreviews.co.uk, or on my other website, which is over at phoebelow.com. If you're interested in watching the other videos on accessible technology that I've done over the years, you can find more over on my PL Tech Reviews YouTube channel. And if you would like to see a couple of my accessible tourism reviews, as well as my film, TV, theatre reviews and political videos, you can see them by searching for Feed Loud Journalism on YouTube. However, if commenting on a website or a video isn't something you would be up to, you can also support the podcast 
by going over to the peeps now here on buymeacoffee.com where you will have the option to give me a one-time donation or to check out other bits of exclusive content that won't be part of the actual podcast as well as checking out various other things that I plan to upload in a store version at some point in the future. Oh, of course, you can support me by going over to any of my socials, which are at Deep Slough on Twitter or X, and the real fake style over on Instagram. You can also follow my other podcast, the Fake Style Podcast, by searching for it on Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music and Audible, and Spotify, where you get everything I cover on Fake Style Journalism and Podcast Forum with some tech news also stuck in there as well. But anyway, that's all for now. So the next episode that comes out will be our review of the Apple TV 4K first generation TV box that I have. So I hope you look forward to that one coming out. So thanks for listening to this complete podcast episode the whole way through. And please follow if you like what I'm doing. I plan to update this podcast twice a week until the 12th of August 2023 when I might have to change things around but also might keep it that way. And it really doesn't follow a set schedule as of yet because, as I said, I will update on some days more than I will on other days. It just depends on really how I'm feeling. You can contact me on Twitter by tweeting at Feebslow or by following me on Instagram over at the real feeds now and you can also follow the technology review site the feeds now tech review site as well through all the links in the description anyway thanks for listening and i'll talk to you in the next one bye